Hey everybody and welcome back. This is our fourth and final part to our how-to video for sampling distributions, confidence intervals, um, margins of error, and so on with Dr. Amy Gates. Thanks for joining me for the fourth part. In part three, uh, we had just finished up calculating a sample standard deviation for this particular data set. And we showed a few different ways to do this. This was the formula for calculating the sample standard deviation for this data set, and the answer was 115.6. We also said that if we want to do this in Excel, here's the formula. And then, of course, you can type these values into StatCrunch if you have access to that, and you can calculate the sample standard deviation that way. We also quickly looked at how to do this by hand, and that was this particular slide. I won't review it again because it's in part three. But we did look at each step in the process and how to, again, get the final solution for the sample standard deviation, which was 115.6. All right, so in our next example, using our calculated sample mean and sample standard deviation, what is the best estimate for our population mean? That's question number one. Knowing that we have our sample mean and our sample standard deviation, what is our best estimate for our population mean? Our best estimate for our population mean is always going to be our sample mean. If we have many sample means, that's even better. We'll get a closer estimate. We can take the average of them. But if we have only one sample mean, which we do in this case, it is the best estimate that we have for our population. So because our sample mean is 242.7, the best estimate for our population mean is 242.7. The next question is, what is the margin of error here? What is the margin of error in order to estimate our population mean? All right. Well, I want to use our sample mean, right? And I also want to make sure I'm using our sample standard deviation that we just calculated. The formula for the margin of error is 2 times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. Remember, our sample size was 14. And let's back up so you guys can remember where I got that from. Our sample size came from this sample. There's 14 values in this sample. So our sample size is 14. And the standard deviation of our sample that we calculated was 115.6. So if we multiply that by 2 and divide by the square root of our sample size, we get 61.8. That is our margin of error. That's our margin of error. So if we were building a 95% confidence interval about our mean, we would add and subtract our margin of error from our mean and that would be a confidence interval around the population mean. So in other words, to calculate the 95% confidence interval for the population mean, we're going to take our sample mean, and we're going to add on and also subtract to get the upper and lower bounds. We're going to add on our margin of error that we just calculated. We're also going to subtract the margin of error. And this gives us the lower bound and the upper bound for our 95% confidence interval around the population mean. So that means our population mean mu, 95% of the time, should be between 181 and 305. Notice that I did round up these numbers. I went ahead and rounded. And again, the rounding is very much determined either by the application or what is requested in the assignment. Okay, let's look at one more example. In this case, let's look at sample proportions and sample statistics. Suppose, in this case, you select a random sample of 140 people at a chocolate conference that was actually attended by 1,691 people. So we're at a chocolate conference, which I think sounds excellent. And you grab a sample of 140 people out of the 1,691 people who are there at that conference. Now, within your sample of 140 people, you actually find that 67 of those people secretly prefer vanilla and are just spying on the chocolate conference. Okay, so based on your sample statistic, 
estimate how many people at the conference secretly prefer vanilla. So what's going on here? There's 1,691 people at the conference. You don't know what all of them actually prefer. But you were able to grab a random sample of 140 people, and out of those 140 people, you discovered that 67 of them secretly prefer vanilla. That's your sample proportion. So your sample proportion is 67 out of the 140 people that you were able to grab. 0.479 of these people out of your sample actually prefer vanilla. That's your sample proportion, sometimes called P hat. I'm sorry, my hat fell over to the side. This is also sometimes called a sample statistic. Now, our conference actually has 1,691 people. So we can use this sample proportion to estimate how many people out of this 1,691 actually do prefer vanilla secretly. And we do that simply by multiplying our sample proportion by the total number of people at the conference. And that gives us an estimate based on our sample proportion of how many people out of our population actually prefer vanilla, which in this case is 810 people. And that, that's just terrible, isn't it? They shouldn't be at this conference at all, but they're spying, clearly. So what did we do to figure this out? We took a sample of our population. Out of that sample, we discovered that 67 of those people preferred vanilla. We did the division to get our proportion. Then we took our sample proportion and multiplied it by the population to get an estimate of how many people at the entire conference actually prefer vanilla. All right. That, um, nope, I've got one more example. There it is. Okay. So, here's a couple more questions to think about. Would you be more confident of your estimate if you sampled 300 people rather than just sampling 140 people? The answer is yes. The more people you sample, the more reliable your estimate will be. A larger sample is always better. The second question is, Suppose you found out that 400 people at the conference actually prefer vanilla. What is the population proportion for our actual conference? So in other words, rather than your estimate, suppose someone actually told you the truth. And suppose out of 1,691 people at the conference, you actually know for sure that 400 of these people prefer vanilla. Now you can actually calculate the population proportion. You don't have to estimate it. You divide the 400 by the 1691, and that's the actual proportion of people who prefer vanilla. All right, thank you so much for joining me for this four-part series. Good luck with your work.